This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Like we know and we we feel it and we know it and we understand it and we learned it and we heard about it many times. The Creator created every single one of us in a different way and for a purpose and with a meaning and also with our lackings, with our weaknesses, with our evil inclination, with our fears and sent us into a certain exiled place not to be able to learn and not to be able to keep our holiness and to face challenges that are above our heads big time parents like you can choose siblings school systems neighborhoods things that and the Creator sent you to that place in a certain moment and every aspect of that plan was calculated and thought from before and planned and you just been sent to that place to hold on, to survive because less than a war there was nothing to it. It was a battle. It was crazy for everyone. Childhood, rebukes, fights, fears, anxieties, separations of parents, moving states, apartments, houses, new friends, new school systems. Everything is traumatic. Everything is very painful. Now, when we are trying today to reconnect ourselves to the truth, to ourselves, all the time we have complained on ourselves why I'm not perfect, why I'm getting angry, why I'm overreacting, why I'm being too emotional, why I can't deal with pressure, why I'm not knowledgeable, why I haven't learned enough, why like. Many complaints, why I don't know how to show affection, why I don't know how to show love, why I don't know how to accept love, how to be loved, my low self-esteem, like, full of, of complaints on yourself. When in reality, if you will check the real reason of why you're suffering so badly, it's obvious. Because that the Creator sent you to that house with those parents, with those siblings, in that area, in that time, in that generation, and corresponding to that, you're full of your own scars, emotional and, and, and physical scars that you carry. So, you cannot complain on yourself not to be perfect when all of your lackings came to you and attached to you as a result of the nature of your creation. Who that made you to be who you are. So the first step into coming closer to the Creator is to come closer to the truth. To the truth of reality. The truth is the reality. To connect yourself to the Creator, it's to connect yourself to the Creator of your reality. To that one that his name is Emet, Hashem Elokechem Emet, your God is the God of truth. And you should connect yourself to the truth. What does it mean the truth? That you should know your place. Da'et mekomcha. You should understand yourself. You should become your best friend, really to go deep into the depths of your spirit, of your soul, of your emotional body. And to start working with yourself on finding who you really are and what's going on in this roller coaster that calls life. In this crazy, crazy lunatic world that we're living in. It's not your fault that it's Halloween today. 
It's not your fault. You haven't created those days. It's not your fault that your kids are coming back from school with crazy ideas. It's not your fault. It's not your fault that you came with crazy ideas from school. It's not your fault. People, kids, your company put those, implant those, those nonsense into your mind. That you need to chase after lust and desires and that you need to, to show off and to pretend to be someone you're not. The, the, the society designed you in a certain way that, that you became who you are. Now to hate yourself on the fact that you just tried to survive all your childhood, just literally tried to hold on to sanity, to be happy, to be protected, not to kill yourself, not to be destroyed by society, not to be humiliated by your parents, by your friends, by your siblings, all the time trying to build your character and to show, pretend to be someone else that will survive. You just tried with the skills of your mind to make a living, to break through the difficulties and challenges of life. The truth is that you didn't know how to do it in the best way, in the way of the righteous ones, in the pure way, in the straight way, in the right, whatever. But with the tools that you have been given, you did the best that you could. And for that, every one of us can sing, I did it my way. <laughs> and, and we did, we tried the best that we could. So the fact that we failed is not our fault. Because how could I ever thought that it would be better for me not to watch horror films, scary videos, movies, when it was on the table? It was on, like my brother, my elder brother just put them one after the other into the, into the, the video, to the, this crazy device, this ancient thing that you can see only on thrift shops today. So that's, that, those were the movies that we were watching. And I'm talking about Yom Kippur. On Yom Kippur, that's what we were watching. Not just on regular days. So what, how could I, as a seven years old, stop myself from watching those, like, Jaws? Like, how, how, how can I go back to, to in, in time, to save myself from, from meeting Freddy Krueger in, in my nightmares. Like, how can, I, how can I fix it? I cannot. I grew up living in that crazy environment that supplied all this craziness and washed my mind and brainwashed my, my heart and my lungs and my kidneys and my liver and everything with the craziness and, and anxiety of, uh, and darkness of the world. So now, the Creator sent me to that place and pushed me further on into that darkness to grow and to get stronger and to achieve certain things and to grow and to develop certain skills in that battle. How can I complain on myself and hate and blame myself on my lackings, I cannot. I cannot. Because I have not created myself. And I have not sent myself to that mission. At least not that I am aware of. In the Gemara, in the ancient scripts, it is written that you agreed on every aspect that you'll experience in life. But now it's coming out of that understanding that life is a mission. And not a chaotic experience of, oh, what a... In the world, am I doing here? Like, what happened? You knew before of time, before of coming down to this world, when your memory was complete, when your knowledge was in the maximum of its capacity, that your ability to grasp the purpose of creation was perfect, and you knew exactly then. Before of creation, before of coming down through all the curtains of physicality, you said, I want to help the Creator 
to fulfill his desire, his will, and to accomplish something in that dark mission, in that dark world, world of lie. And I'm ready to be sent as a warrior, and I hope to make it back, and I'm going to fight. And based on that early, before of time decision, you went down to hell. To hell. Now you're here, and the first thing that happened is that you forgot all your knowledge. That's the beginning of the journey in this world. You forgot the ancient memory disconnected from the ancient archive of your soul, the tons and endless information of reality, what's the real truth, and you're now trapped behind the curtains of illusion. You're in a rush, you have things to do, you must learn, you have to finish, you have to supply, you need to bring, you must be, you have to feel, you need to... and on and on and on. And all those things are things that your body is demanding, is forcing you to feel and to be under pressure and to see and to ignore and to have to and to, and, and to fight with and to disagree. And, and all those things are happening to you while you don't remember who you are at all. What's your mission? And there is no way out because the world is surrounding you and it's round and it's surrounding you in 600 and 360 degrees. That's it. From outside, there is no way out. There are no way out. No outlets. There is no ways. No, nothing like... Even to the moon, they're saying that it was a Hollywood movie, a conspiracy of like, no, no one ever been there before and just making up fantasies for people to believe that a man walked on the moon. At it. And it had been videoed in uh, Area 51, I don't know. <laughs> in reality, there is no way out from this world until the person loses his body and the soul is coming back to heaven. Where is it coming to heaven from? From within. The spiritual soul that your body, your vehicle is carrying is attached to you from within and when the body will lose its grip your soul will set, be set free and that's it came back to reality to the world of truth that is above this prison of this world now the secret and that's the only way out from this world of lie to connect yourself to the truth is to connect yourself to your soul as long as you're still alive. It will happen to the person no matter what he will do after 120. In the last moment of his life he will fly high to the world of truth to see the Creator and the truth face to face. But we can achieve that truth and to find an inner connection, inner, inner channel to bring the wisdom of truth while we're alive here on this planet. And it's not hard. It just requires... It, it, I, I don't know, for me it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a decision, maybe it's dedication, but... Um, but uh, it, it depends in your will, basically. You need to want it. The main thing that the Torah is telling us every day, we need to repeat and to say it over and over again. You should love Hashem b'chol levavcha, v'chol nafshecha, v'chol maodecha. You should love the Creator, v'ahavta, to love. With all your heart, with both of your inclinations, with your good, and holy desires, and also with your negative ones. When you eat, and when you're hungry, and when you're tired, and when you're angry, you need to find a way how to love Hashem. You need to find the good that is hidden in those negative experiences that you're experiencing, and to understand that there's a purpose for that negativity. 
that that mission is a noble mission. It's an amazing mission. There is wisdom behind all those husks and coverings that are blocking the light of truth. And when you recognize the godliness that is hidden and treasured in this world, in that moment you remove those curtains away and they will never stand up back again. You're removing them for good. When you recognize godliness in situations, when you realize that it's Hashem, the Creator of the world, that He is the one that is running those wheels, that He is the one that is pushing, lighting, moving, running this en engine, in that moment you reveal His kingship. And you break the illusion of nature, that this world is a result of, of natural causes and not a creation of a Creator. But you can do it only when you are coming out of that matrix. Only when you are unplugging yourself from your lust and desires and attachments to physicality. When you say, even when you are weak, like we said, even in your evil inclination, even if now you feel like, man, I'm falling like I know it like that's it I'm going down go down with Hashem even if you go in the valley of death King David is able to say that you may be scared to say that some rabbis may be scared to say that King David was not scared he was aware to the reality that you find yourself sometimes in the valley of death Nothing can stop it from happening to you. Not if you're Rabbi El Yashiv, or Rabbi Ovadia Yosef, or Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, or the Lubavitcher Rebbe, or Moshe Rabenu, or Abram, or Sarah, or Rachel, or Esther Amalka, and on and on and on. Every single person in this universe went through thousands of up and downs in his lifetime. Everyone, 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 every single one, with no exceptions. Thousands of up and downs. You want the Bible to describe all the arguments and conversations of Abraham and Sarah? You think that they didn't have when people came to their house on daily basis and the tent was open from four wings and, and people would come in and out and the maid was there and people were there and animals were there and children were running. When children came after 100 years of, 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 of prayers. Everyone are suffering. That's the mission. The mission is not to suffer. The mission is to realize that behind those curtains of sufferings and emotional satisfactions and all those things that are only an illusion, there is a hidden truth of the real purpose of our life. And the real purpose of our life is simple. It's just to be who we are. There is only one thing that you cannot do in this world, and it's to be someone else. If you want to be a pilot, you can learn. You can be a pilot. If you want to learn Torah, <laughs> no one can stop you. If you want to learn Torah, you're going to go, you're going to learn Torah. If you want to go and live in Israel, <laughs> you're going to live in... No one can stop you. If that's your decision, and that's what you've finished in your mind, you cl I'm going, you're there. You're already there. But to become someone else, you cannot. Even with all plastic surgeries that you're going to be, you're going to be, look different. But you won't be him, you won't be her. It's not an option. And all day long our mind is comparing us to different people. You're not as rich, you're not as successful, you're not making it. Look at him, look at her, look what's going on there. That house, that yard, that garden, that house, that car, those vehicles, that business, that option. That like. All that is distracting your mind from reality 
of who you are in the secret of your creation. You don't need to be a genius. You've been created to be you. That's it. The end of the story. Now what? What do you do with that? What do you do with your qualities? What do you do with your skills? What do you do with your weaknesses? What do you do with your life? That's the only thing. That's the only question. What do, who are you? What are you doing here? <laughs> so, what, what are you doing here? I'm asking. You're not answering it. <laughs> who are you and what are you doing here? Doctor or whatever. Nonsense. You're not a doctor. You're a sick person that needs money. Terrified. You know how many people are running and chasing money not because they want to have money, just because they're scared to be left without? And they will run and save and invest and sell and buy and go and fly and like every, and only because that they have an inner anxiety, fear to stay broke. Why? Because one night their mother was screaming in the kitchen to their father, you gonna lose everything for us. We're not gonna make it. I don't know what's gonna happen. And she was crying for a couple of hours and you as a child lost your mind from that experience. And that's it, a prisoner for life, running and years, working in companies and then writing and, and, and learning and, and investing all your life only because you don't deal with your fears. Not because you must work, you must work in your mind because you think that you must work because your mother told you that you must work and because that she was crying it been carved with a knife on the pure board of your heart and that's it scars and now you've been scarred and damaged and traumatized and now you're gonna work like a donkey like an animal like a cheetah i don't mind you can be happy with your high self-esteem with your james bond suitcase no problem Play the game. But in reality, the only reason why you're working like crazy is not because you need the money and not because you want the money, just because you're scared to be left without it. And the truth is that you don't even care to be left without it. Just you don't want to remember that moment and to feel those emotions that you felt when you were seven years old. You're afraid of your own fear and that's what that brings you to disconnect yourself from certain people and to run away from commitments and like all your life are being set based on those crazy patterns that are just trying to protect that innocent and pure soul that you are and by protecting you blocking you from being who you are I'm not going to love ever again. I'm not going to share my emotions ever again. I'm not going to open up anymore. I'm never going to say what I feel. All those nonsense blocking you from your happiness. Because you're following your fears and falling in the trap of the evil inclination that makes fun over your, above your head, laughing and mocking because he sees that you lost your life. And for that he's happy. Because he made you give up on your dreams, give up on who you are, and not fulfilling the destiny that's been set for you from heaven to be who you are, to love in the way that you can love and no one else can love like you can love, and to respect and to appreciate, to sing, to dance, to walk to collect certain things, to appreciate, to feel, to smell, to sense. No one else can do it better than you. No one. Because only you are you. And no one else can be you. Like that you cannot be else. The only mission in this lifetime is to be honest and to find out who you are and to fight with your fears to reveal your true self to the world without pushing no one to the side. You don't need to overpower no one. No one is tapping uh, on, on your foot, on your feet. You must understand that. One person came to the Lubavitcher Rebbe and told him, every place I go, 
people are laughing at me, people are, are insulting me, people are arguing with me, I don't have a place in this world. The Lubavitcher Rebbe answered to him, if you wouldn't spread yourself all over the place, people wouldn't stamp on you. Like you think the, the people are stamping on me. You are putting yourself under their footsteps. You are not in your place. That's why you feel that people are walking all over you. Be honest with yourself and try to find your spot, your real spot. I decided that I want to learn four hours Torah every day. Now my wife, she has complaints on that. She doesn't want to let me be who I am. Wait. Before you come to those wise conclusions, maybe check, maybe those four hours not belongs to you. Maybe you should check and find the hours in a wiser way, more wisely. Maybe you should understand that when you are taking those four hours, you're not taking what that belongs to you. You're taking some hours or some time from someone else that needs you in that time, that you belong to him. In the agreement of your married, that's an example. That's an example. So you're going to hate and going to be frustrated. No one let me learn. No one understands me. When you are acting selfish and you don't care about someone else that needs you. Someone needs you. Someone needs you. You know how lucky you are that someone needs you? You know how much money people would pay to feel that someone needs them? You have people that are walking in the world with the feeling that no one needs them. You know what a horrible feeling is that? And you have complaints that people need you. She can't deal on her own. She can't do anything alone. You're flushing the diamonds on, like on your own, by yourself. Ah, diamonds, who needs them? Precious people cares about you, needs you, loves you. That's deep. But you can't see, you cannot see, you cannot recognize the, the wisdom that is hidden and treasured in those situations because you are acting selfish. Because you're finding yourself struggling. No, but I and me and I need and I must do. And, and you can pretend to be a Baal Tshuva and to, to claim that you want to be righteous. And no, what am I asking? To pray in the Minyan, to go to synagogue, to learn some Torah, to keep Shabbat. What am I asking? What are you asking? If you're not asking for much, so why are you fighting for that? You are asking for much. You are asking for something very, very big. That's why you're asking for it, right? You're asking for something very, very big. To be holy, to be pure. Those are big things that you're asking. And when you're asking those things, you need to prepare yourself to some challenges. Because in this world of illusion, this world of darkness, there is a war between the sides. The sides of, of darkness, the, 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 the side of illusion, is fighting for the souls because he is taking out his energy and his life out of the pure souls. And the pure souls, they have a crazy mission, like we described before, that they need to realize that they are pure souls. And we are those pure souls and our mission is to find who we really are and to come back home. To come back home means in our mind. To be who you are. Not to be scared. Not to be afraid. People are telling me what we're going to do, the Jewish people in the U.S., what's going on? I'm telling you, buy tzitziot, my son is, is, is tying tzitziot. You can order thousands of tzitziot, tilt wear them on your shirts, outside, stop cutting your side curls, become like, relax, be who you are. A friend of mine asked me, how am I going to have peot like you have? I told him, stop cutting them. <laughs> Stop! Just like, leave them, let them be. You don't need to be like me. I'm just expressing from my own life experience and you should be you. You don't need to be like me. That's how I feel, that I'm representing who that I know that I am. And with that I'm going. With that I'm going to every Walmart branch in, in the U.S. 
in Elizabeth Town in Tennessee, we went into the Walmart. The, like, <laughs> what are those? <laughs> are the kids for sale? Like, from which planet you came? <laughs> you are who you are. I said it many times, when I started to become ri ridiculously religious, that's how you say it? I was not searching for, for Hashem and not for the Torah and not for something meaningful. I felt that something is wrong with my life and I was searching for the truth. And in reality, I suddenly realized, hey, I'm Jewish. I have Jewish roots inside of me. And then I start investigating. Okay, so what does it mean? What does it mean? You have a huge, huge community in Africa, friends of mine that I'm in touch with them, that they know in tradition that they are Hebrews, that they are from child of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. They know it for sure. You have communities that are running services and, and prayer, prayers by the halacha, keeping Shabbat and eating kosher. They know their roots, like you can't argue with them. They're stronger than you. They will tell you who they are. They're not, they don't ask you even. They're claiming to be Jewish, to be Israelis. And they know their roots, they know their history, their ancestor told them exactly what happened and where they came from and which war and which battle and how they crossed the lands, how, when it happened. And they have the Bible and it's all written over there and they don't have no problems in life. Except of that we're not able to accept them, to recognize the godliness of the holy tribes that is treasured inside them, their souls. And you have the problem not recognizing your own brother. And not understanding that there is a way to let him back in. Because we have today all the power to do that. We have all the sources, we have the land, we have everything we need. Except of the key to our hearts that is still missing. Oh, no, I have my own things, my mind, my wife, my house, whatever. You need to be crazy to go, like, on a mission like me. Not every person is able. Not every person should. But every person should find the key to his own heart and open it and try to feel what's going on around you. Because it can be your next door neighbor that needs you more than oxygen, more than life itself. That he needs your smile, that he needs your support. And you can revive a dead person. You can make resurrection of the dead right away, now in your house. In, in front of your house, next door neighbor. Tell him, Shalom Aleichem, how are you? What's going on? Achi, my brother, missed you. Let's talk, what's going on? One cup of tea. Few moments of conversation can give a person an opportunity to change his life and to reroute his direction to, to a holy destiny and to be good and to be pure and to be happy and satisfied from life. And you can be that messenger. Just give, your, give yourself the credit that you can make changes in the world, that you are here on a mission all those weaknesses, all those post-trauma, all of our childhood, all of those walls of, of, of protection that we took upon ourselves, they became a shield, an armor that is protecting us today from the darkness and the strength of the war, from how hard and dangerous the war is. Today, take me, put me in a club, in a wild forest party, I know exactly how to deal over there. I won't take drugs, I won't be blinded by the women on, or, or the alcohol, like nothing gonna buy me. I'm gonna try exactly to fulfill my destiny and to find those souls that I need probably to take out from that party and to save some lives. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Put me in the beach in the middle of Shabbat, Shabbos, I won't be blinded from what I'm going to see. Why? Because I know exactly what there is over there. Why? Because I've been there. 
Take a Hasidish kid out of yeshiva, take him, 17 years old, pure as, as a baby that just born. Put him in that party, put him in that beach in, in, in Saturday afternoon, you killed him. He won't survive that experience. He's going to lose his mind. Give him five minutes in that party and bring him back to Mesharim, Jerusalem, to his Hasidish shul, with his father, with his rabbi. He can't learn. That's it. His mind is off. Why? He's fragile. He's too delicate for this world. He cannot deal with the things that you can deal with. He cannot face the war like that you can because you have the skills. And how you bought that skill, that ability? You've been qualified by the Creator when He sent you into the depths of the fire and sent you to that crazy mission that you are making, that you are surviving, that you're succeeding in it right now, that you made 20 years of your journey, 30 years of your time, 40 years, you're here. Here you are learning Torah. Here you are realizing that you have a mission in life. Here you are refreshing your memory with a purpose, with meaningful life. Here you are achieving. Who are you? That one that fought in that war and survived that battle and, 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 and been escaped from, from, from that terror attack. And in all that time, rescuing tens or hundreds or thousands of sparks. If it's while you're eating, you're uplifting sparks. If when you're being nice and acting nicely to people, you're uplifting and rising sparks. When you're learning, when you're achieving, when you're coming closer to the truth. In every moment of success in your life, you collected diamonds and you put them in your sack. You saved those lost sparks of the Shekhinah Kedoshah that been spread in the exile, in the darkness of exile. And for us to have the ability to rescue those sparks, for that the Creator dressed us as the local ones, as the natives, that no one will recognize you, that you will have the ability and the skills to go into the enemy area and to take those diamonds and to escape and to save another soul, and to disappear. And people will talk to you because they learned with you in college, and people will discuss certain issues with you because they were sitting with you in the same bar. And people will count on you only because you went wild and crazy in that night. And based on that, they will hold your hand and will count on you and will let you lead them and help them to find their true selves, to be aware to their own skills, to the power that is treasured inside of them in the nature of their creation, without you being responsible on them. Just love them with all your heart. When you're up and when you're down, when it's easy and when it's hard, just love. You know the next song, right? All you need is love. <laughs> nine, 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 nine. All, oh, you're too young for that song. <laughs> all you need is love, love, love. Love is all you need. Thank you. A Muna Project is a non-profit organization. Our organization is helping the most broken souls in the universe. You're more than welcome to help us to support our activities around the world. Now we're crossing the country. And uh, Hashem, we have wonders and miracles. You can see the books and the CDs and to enjoy our content on social media, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, SoundCloud, and, and Instagram and on and on and on and our website emuna with an h emuna.com not emuna without an h not emuna.org 
emunawithhashem.com Okay? <laughs> and we're in it to win it. So join the winners. Hashem bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Shkoyach too. Questions? You think that it's damaging them to see me for another minute? <laughs> Someone wants to ask a question? No? You don't want to crucify me live on Facebook? <laughs> what do you do to, to gain desire when you don't have desire? You desire for Hashem. Even desire for Hashem, yeah. So, I said it once that there are many things that we're asking from Hashem. Like, Hashem, I want to serve you. Hashem, I want to commit myself to you. I want to be a person of truth. But if you'll check yourself, you're going to see that, like, you're not being honest at all. Because really, if someone now is going to come and offer a nice burger with fries, like, oh, that's my Abadat Hashem now. Like, you're going to choose that. Like, money, like, all, oh, like... Many things that will be offered to you will reject that request that you just asked for, like in reality. So, instead of not being honest while asking certain things that you don't really desire, like Hashem, I want to be pure. <laughs> if you would want to be pure, you would throw away the television and your stupid phone and you would guard your eyes and you would commit yourself to work on yourself. And they, like, there are many things to do if you really want to be pure. So, to ask for purity in that way of saying to Hashem, Hashem, I want to be pure, please Hashem, make me pure, it's basically to lie. Because you don't really want to be pure. What you do want, really, you want to want to be pure. So say that. Say to Hashem, Hashem, look, I don't want to be pure. Like, I can't handle purity. I don't like it. It's too hot. It's, it's too high. I'm, I'm not able to function pure. So please, Hashem, let me want those good things that I just mentioned. Like, let me want, let me understand what purity is all about. Like, connect yourself to the truth of that purpose that you, that you wished for. So if you want to have a desire to serve Hashem and you don't have that desire, so the only real thing to do about it is to express it and to talk about it with Hashem. To tell Hashem, look Hashem, there is a lot of Avodat Hashem, things that can be done for you. And I don't like really feel like doing it at all. Like 100% don't want it. But I do want to want it because I do understand that it is important, but I don't feel it. So please, can you help me to want it more or to understand the importance of it? Help me to find my link, my connection to Avodat Hashem. Now, when you said those simple words, first of all, it's humbling. And it's connecting you to the truth. You asked a real honest request from Hashem. First, you were lying. Hashem, I want to be pure. Hashem, make me holy. Take me to the Holy Land. Okay, now you have a ticket. Go. No, no, no. Why not? Why not? No, I have this, I have that. Thousands of excuses. Why? Because really you, you're not ready. You're not able. You don't want yet. So it's better to be honest and to say to Hashem, okay, I understand there is that land. It's a promised land. It's a wonderful land. It's a, like amazing. I heard many stories, even visit once or twice, whatever. Nice. Agreed. But where is my connection? Where is the bridge that I can walk on that in the end of that bridge I'll make it? It's like Yad bin Yamin, Mevaseret, Gilo, Bet Shemesh, Bet Shemesh Gimel, like where, what? What's my connection? Is it a city? Is it a town? Maybe it's something inner that I miss. Maybe there is something inside that haven't been built yet. Maybe there are some sparks that I haven't collected yet to complete that vessel to bring me to the understanding what the Holy Land is all about. So to connect yourself to your desires, to your holy, pure will, from a point of truth, that is my advice. To be honest and to say to Hashem, look, I don't know, learning Torah, it's nice, but the finals, 
but the 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 championship but the watermelon i can relate to it much much more so please hashem can you help me with that please that i'll feel the sweetness of torah that the sweetness will be revealed to me through holy mitzvot and good actions and not through candies and chocolate bars <laughs> please because i'm in prison now hashem stuck with those chocolate bars looks like a life sentence so please hashem the honesty will set you free from the illusion and fake life in this world and will bring you to a place of humility, being able to express your heart in front of Hashem and ask help for things that you really need. And by that, solving one problem after the next and healing yourself and dealing with the reality of your journey and taking responsibility on your weaknesses. And my WhatsApp number is available as well, so you can always be in touch if you need another advice. Can you smile? Me? Yes, please. Like for a second. You just did it. Some little bit. You did. Thank you. Thank you, Abba Yisai. Thank you, Rabbi. Please subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com.